Warning, content from Security Kitchen Productions may not be suitable for younger viewers. The Web of Fear, part one, starting in three, two, one, go. We here, we watching the Web of Fear. We are. This was meant to be Ambassadors of Death. No, 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 no. This was no. always this, this month's commentary. The Ambassadors of Death commentary is just fucking cursed, though. So. It, it, <laughs> well, didn't this happen last year, too, when we tried to do the second Ambas- commentary? <laughs> when we tried to do Ambassadors. So, so, no, so, so you're cur- No, no, the second just commentary cursed. went just fine. The second commentary was Time Flight. That went over. Just, that went over smoothly. I thought that was the one we had a bunch of trouble with, though. No, mm-mm. No, that was just we fun. Did, we did Black Orchid then Time Flight, didn't we? I think they changed the subtitles font. Oh, they did! Oh, no! Now it's not as stupid looking. <laughs> yeah. It's <was> unfortunate. <laughs> and we have Patrick Troughton topping a feel on Debbie Watling. Mm. <laughs> oh, God, special. no! What have we done? This is the first commentary with Deborah Watling in it. Oh, no. Just a reminder, everybody. I'm gonna be honest. I, I, I love this. I, I love the way Camfield. One more time. I, I love the way Camfield directs the scene. Um, like with just, just like also that camera tilt. I don't know why. I really like that camera tilt. Just it's, tilting back. Deborah Watling looking thick though. Am I right? Fuck off. <laughs> Oh fuck! <laughs> so, for those unaware, this is my favorite Troughton story. I adore this one. Is it really? Yeah, I love Web of Fear. Web of Fear is is brilliant. I um, when it came back in 2013, I stayed up like that night to watch it when it was released on iTunes after Enemy of the World. Oh, cool. I might have. That was one of the few times I've ever pulled an all nighter, <laughs> and I fell asleep in geometry the next day. Nice. Because I was like a sophomore in high school. <laughs> uh, I'm still in high school. Brian, I'm also like three or four oh, years older than you. Here we fucking go. Oh, this scene. This, this is this, this is my this is probably my favorite scene in the whole damn story, which I know is weird to say for like the second oh, this scene. Might, this might be well, one it, of my favorite story favorite scenes in the whole damn series well, like, okay let's oh, just talk about again the lighting the lighting in this and entire it's, story it's this so damn atmospheric and, and like the music this, is amazing like th- this the scene in particular would be like reused like, like, by Jake, stanley kubrick up. in the shining yes i know but like this scene i mean really the whole story but this scene in particular is what always sells me on the atmosphere here and it's the prime example of, of what i say of what i mean when i say like the web of fear is is probably the best usage of the black and white format for for doctor who it's well, honestly, it looks like it. It looks like it's a horror film. It that is yeah. how this is shot. It, oh, this is oh, shot yeah. like a classic nineteen thirty, not and not like a hammer horror of the style, but like a classic gothic nineteen thirties horror. Definitely, definitely. And it, it's, it's also like the one scene we get to see of real normalcy before everything goes to hell on Earth. Where, also, a mysterious uh, play. Travers is quarantined in London. What do you guys think of? Proto Danny DeVito, though. <laughs> you really just call him Proto Danny DeVito? <laughs> but yes, he's not that short. That's what he looks like, and he's just as enjoyable to me. I mean, he's a fun character. For the whole five minutes that he's on screen and not dead. <laughs> and not... <sighs> it's also nice that, you know, they actually give Anne Travers a personality, like. She's very much a proto Liz Shaw. Yeah, she's great. She's great in downtime too. I read that fairly recently, and she's great in that. Um. Oh yeah. Also, for uh, before we get too far into this commentary, uh, when this comes out, we should currently be casting the Scales of Injustice. If you're an actor who is interested in uh, in working in Doctor Who fan made audio dramas, then by all means check that out. Um, it's gonna be a fun story. We need a lot of people for it, so yeah. It, there's uh, also a chance that it'll be our lo- largest cast. Because... It most de- most definitely, most definitely. Oh boy! Oh boy! 
it's just this argument of the quick cuts back and forth. It's great. Uh, you know, yeah, the dude, Silverstein has, has a point. He, he, he has a point. There's no reason to believe that, that like, this, the Yeti is dangerous. Yeah. Like, he is completely justified in his greed. And mm-hmm. it's what kills him. And you know, just being like, oh, okay, Dad, you're fine. Everything's okay. Can we just appreciate how good this story was that it actually connected to the original story with the Yeti in it? Well, I mean, that's like, not very difficult to do when they were in the same season. Well, I mean, yeah, but like with other with other recurring monsters, you know, you never really get them going back to the original setup with the original characters. Not yeah, that like the dir- same. I, I just like yeah, that there's it, a there's a through line with the Abominable Snowman and the Web of Fear. Even if I don't like the Abominable Snowman, it is a nice touch. That's worth noting, actually. Ooh, that, I love that, the way that light fades. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I, uh, I, I agree with you there, Brian. Like, I don't really like the Abominable Snowman that much. I mean, it's a fun story, but like, it goes on way too long, and it being lost certainly doesn't help its case. But it's kind of amazing, like not only how it connects, but also like how how vastly superior the Web of Fear is. And the Web of Fear was probably written on like a time crunch, <clears throat> considering it it was commissioned right after Snowman aired. I think. Yeah, insane, fucking insane. Also, I, I love the the Yeti redesign in this story. Yeah. Oh yeah. These Yeti, they, these Yeti are totally better than the original ones. Indeed. And now you have just the sandwiches. <clears throat> and Trouton and Heinz being Trouton and Heinz. <laughs> yes. Which. And... Also, this is a story where you get to see Victoria's character development because she's. Look, she's, like, wearing a dress that's short, and, like, the big thing in Tomb of the Cyberman is she didn't want to wear a dress because it was a bit short. That's a good point, actually. It's a very minor thing, but yeah, that's interesting. And here's our tiny little bit of com- comedy for the evening. Because this is a story all about, you know... Yo, how fucking how fucking cool is this story? It's about a town that goes basically ghost town and on lockdown. Meanwhile, current world events, though, am I right? I already made that joke, Ryan. But you when? interrupted me. You two were talking over me. Also, I I I, I love this shot. Just just like the TARDIS in space. God damn, we've actually, we've, we've actually sustained nearly ten minutes actually talking about the story. Oh, Isn't I think that we... fucking weird? We better we better uh, get off the rails. <laughs> right? Fuck else. this. I am <laughs> going to bring this back to the rails eventually, because I love, I love this story to bits. All I have to do is bring up downtime, and you guys will go on a huge fucking talk about that instead. It's true. Downtime's great, though. I mean, I haven't, watched the, I haven't watched the BBV film, but the book is great. <laughs> I imagine they're vastly different, sort of like... I don't, think, I don't think I saw when the TARS materialized the typical whooshing. I saw whirring. Yeah, yeah there's whirring. Is whirring uh, the new whooshing? But no, Brian, I mean, as far, as far as, like, the big differences between them, the, like, just reading the book, I could tell, like, you know, what kind of stuff would be cut from the film. Um, and really, the Doctor is actually a bit more prominent in downtime than one would expect, or at least his influence is. And there, there are a couple of scenes where the Doctor just straight up appears. <laughs> Which because wouldn't the happen in the one. movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, um, the movie came first. Yeah. It was released yeah. first. Yeah, I know um, that. It, it's it's the shakedown of the missing adventure. Yeah. Oh, and here we have Harold Shorley. So okay. was Shakedown based on the novel, or was the novel based on Shakedown? The novel was an the expansion novel was of based Shakedown. On shakedown movie. But weirdly enough, the actual like 
shakedown film bit in the novel is probably the least interesting interesting thing that happens in the novel. Because <clears throat> again, I haven't seen the BB, BBB film, but I've seen but I've read the book. So good book. I mean, not Dix's best, but it's good. A lot of fan rock references. <laughs> As you one would expect. Okay, yeah. Oh, look, a mili- this is, uh What does the military know about a situation like this? I, I love, I love how Travers is just sort of just this old coot. I I can't be the only one who like legitimately loves Chorley, can I? Oh, he's such a fun character. He's fun. Yeah. Like, he pisses me off so much, but I love him for it. I think part of this is just down to Douglas Camfield knowing how to cast people. Oh my god, Jacob. <laughs> We're gonna start up a counter in the comments. Uh, how many times okay. Jacob brings, brings up Douglas Camfield in this commentary? Well, I mean, did he direct this one? Yes. Well, I mean, it's some of his finest work. Like... Oh, definitely. Here's the thing. I may not... look Like, I, I do like this story. I do think it gets a bit running in circles in the middle, though. No. But, but this is some really, really nice directing for 60s Doctor Who. It's also probably the best use of the, of the TARDIS console room set since, like, Edge of Destruction. Hmm. Is like a good part of this episode takes place just in the TARDIS. Yeah. It's also interesting that part one has always survived. Um, oh, really? I didn't know it was actually surviving from the original. Uh, yeah, see, I knew one... that because because although until this story was found, I hadn't seen it. I I had seen clips of it from all of them from the first episode, so I was aware that the first episode existed. Hmm. Yeah, it, and it's interesting that it survived i mean um i think i think footage of part one was used in the war games wasn't it i don't know maybe all i know is that scene where the yeti comes to life has always been ingrained in my mind because of some dvd special feature i found where that clip was very prominently used Cool. Also, it's just amazing that we have parts, all of this, except one episode. No. Yeah, but it's the fucking episode that introduces the brig, and that of course, it just, of just course, endlessly because, pisses me because off. Because, of course, it is. <laughs> Look, it's going to be, it's, it probably still exists, part three exists in some private collector's collection somewhere. Oh, definitely. Speaking of private collectors, did you guys see those, um, those, uh, yes. prints of, of power? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh my god, how cool speculate. was that? And it, I, I was thought we were having uh, that's just interesting to have like yeah so wait what is that like a now a surviving clip of that story well I mean there were seven there were seven uh, prints and each of them are half a second long so we only gained three and a half seconds of power of the Dallas yeah but it's, it's still oh, really cool. and it's well one it's still cool just to see things that didn't exist yeah especially because like two of the shots showing lesterson looking at the dalek assembly line were completely new like we hadn't seen those in any of the telos snaps we and like the animation didn't even go that far those shots were completely new yeah oh, it's cool. isn't it i love it oh man fucking oh i want more <laughs> i really want more <laughs> I wonder, I want, uh, I know there have been rumors of a special edition being released to power, so I wonder, I wonder. What would be the saying. point in doing a special edition of power, it, though? That's my question. Unless, unless something was found, yeah. Yeah. Like, 
those those three seconds are all nice and dandy, but why in the fuck would you release a special edition just for those three seconds? Yeah. Yeah. But they're all only rumors, so... You know, it probably is just, you know, rumors that are going to die off and nothing's going to come of it. Yeah. Also, can we talk about how much I love Josh Snares and his photo of Nyssa in response <laughs> to that bullshit? Oh, fuck. Oh, this scene. This scene is genuine. Like, oh, look at that. that is, oh, that's so That is great. genuinely frightening. Does it, okay, what reminds me about the DVD release of this is that there's no information text. I want to know, was that guy an actor? Or was that just like a wax dummy? I don't know. Huh. It looked very grotesque, though. Yeah, it looks great. It looks like something's going out the tunnels. Oh, oh, Joe, Jamie, you could die right now. <laughs> Fucking Troutman and Hines and their goddamn slapstick routines. <laughs> Some of this had to be in the script. Also, the doctor's like, yeah, Jamie so completely knows what electricity is, when he probably doesn't. Like, let's be honest. Fuck, can we stop talking about this story? This isn't what people come to these videos for. Fuck. Huh? This isn't what people come to these videos for. We're not supposed to talk about the damn story, Jacob. Yeah, you fuck wing. What the shit, chuckle cunt? <laughs> chuckle <laughs> Why do I have a feeling that Brian was just wanted to call me a chuckle fuck, but like didn't want to reuse fuck? Well, he used fuck before. Oh no, he used fuck before, so he was out of the word fuck. So he switched to cunt, and it kind of worked, but not really. I mean, it's a new one that you haven't heard from my mouth before, that's for sure. Chuckle cunt. <laughs> Ooh, this this this, ru this routine. I love the lighting in this story. I also I lo I love the credits. Deeds. We'll we'll talk probably talk about the detail on the credits. Because mm -hmm. that's just that's just that's just cool. Oh. I just remembered! The fuck-up soldier is in this story. The fuck-up soldier? Special Agent Fuck-up. That's what I call him, because I can't remember his name. <laughs> well, I don't know who you're talking about right he's now. The, so. who, he's the clumsy one. The clumsy soldier. I think he, I think he's found wandering towards the middle Evans, of the story. Evans, the driver? Maybe. Point Probably, yes. Yeah. Point him out to us when you get to it. Special Agent Fucker. No, I'm sure it's Evans now. Because I think he's on the cover of one of those Lethbridge Stewart novellas. What's the difference between a novella and a novel? I think it's just length. Yeah, novellas can are typically like. Ninety-ish pages, which is why because, but of my sick man is a very, very short novel and almost a novella. Why do people hate the sea devils? I don't know. They're fucking wrong. Right. Joey. Yes. I also ask the same question about Planet of the Daleks. Planet of the Daleks isn't bad, though. Yeah, but there's, like, a very large group of people that hate it to bits. Fucking why? I don't know. Huh. It has a great Pertwee speech in it. I mean... Good. 
cool. It takes elements from each of the Dalek stor stories before it and recycles them to some extent, but it still it still manages to be enjoyable nonetheless. Oh, definitely, definitely. I think this is the first real look we get of the Yetis in the story, like. Other than their entire reveal scene, yeah, Jacob. Yeah, but like this is the first. <laughs> other than you know the the Jacob, fucking we iconic see... scene from like the first ten minutes. Yeah. yeah, but like this is the first time we get to see like that. There's more than one, and that they like you only it... see one in that shot, Jacob. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm talking. Don't you get to see more than one in the cliffhanger? We well, yeah, but we're not at the cliffhanger yet. You said that was the scene, and there was only one Yeti there. <laughs> The answer is Jacob is wrong. Yes. Yeah, so guys, I built a new shelf last night. Thank you. <laughs> so to house to house all the books that you don't, you're gonna you're never gonna read because you don't they read look very much. Really, really nice on that shelf. I also separated my CD collection from my DVD collection, so the CD collection just looks a lot better now much more tidy oh did you see that that thing swooshing swooshing yeah, i think that's how they're describing the uh the, the wet the, the guns oh nice. i remember the cliffhanger to this one the dynamite goes off but instead of exploding it just flashes and pulsates <laughs> okay this is probably like the one one of the few times like the first time since like the web planet in doctor's history that it did like Lovecraftian type storytelling. Mm, I'm not entirely sure that this is Lovecraftian. I'd say the Silurians are way more Lovecraftian than this. Ooh, definitely. Ancient evil from the dawn of time type bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is an ancient uh, incorporeal evil from space. That well, is. I mean, true. I, I, I mean, the character of the Great Intelligence is is definitely. Lovecraft, Lovecraft, but like, I mean, the, the, the story it, itself isn't. It doesn't have it, it's it's Lovecraft. It's Lovecraftian ideas mixed with gothic horror instead of cosmic horror. Maybe is perhaps a better description. I can accept that a little bit more. Oh yeah, lads. But are you forgetting about the fucking animus? I fucking love the animus. Yeah. This is the first Lovecraftian influenced, big Lovecraftian influenced story since what I said, the web. Oh, Jacob, Jacob, Jacob said since the web planet. Did Brian. he? <laughs> yeah, Fuck, he did. I didn't hear that bit. This time Brian's wrong. I'll go hang myself then. Because the animus is definitely also Lovecraftian in nature. I've also been like reading some Lovecraft short stories recently. I started doing that about a year ago, and well, you know You maybe have made it through one short Jacob. story. You maybe made it through one short story. I made it through... Well, I was trying to read them all in order of, like, how he'd written them, and a lot of his early works are sort of half-surviving. So I made it halfway through one of the ones that half exists. There was one I read about this little girl who... Uh, she enters a doorway with her brother and is taken down this, like, really horrible stream of events... I think she loses her brother and has to like fight her way back out before she drowns or something. Mm. But it was all described in like really weird adjectives that made it feel surreal. It was nice. <sighs> it was cool. Yeah. Motherfucker's ass at dialogue though. I just remember the last time we did a commentary with just the just the two of you was Attack of the Cybermen, and that was the one where I lost my mind. Yeah, I don't think you lose your mind on this. 
I don't know. I don't know. It's, I, it's, I love it's how I love how the possibility. I love how the explosives like keep pulsating. Yeah. Before fading out, that's. It's just little details like that that add so much to the story. Why don't they use the revamped theme? I don't fucking know. They used it in Tomb of the Cybermen, which is this season. They didn't hear, though. Sadness. Who also, cares? you have the webbing over the titles. The Web of Fear, part two, starting in three, two, one, go. So in the break, we called Brian a dick. Uh, Brian is a dick. I mean, your dad couldn't hear me, could he? No. For those of you who don't know, his father put... He... he, they, he <laughs> <laughs> fuck! <laughs> Wait a minute. Is the, are the ti- are the um, right. are the subtitles on? Yeah, they're not gonna fucking subtitle the title sequence, Jacob. No, but they usually do fucking like, Doctor retard. Who. Here. Yeah, it was there already. <laughs> was it? I missed it. I must have missed it. Explosion. Isn't this also an episode where Patrick Troughton takes a vacation? Is it? I think it is, because th- I'm pretty sure they just reused the footage, which is, like, of the cliffhanger, which is something that they usually didn't do because of how expensive it took. It is. You know what my favorite refilmed cliffhanger thing is? What's up? It's the one from Black Orchid, where the cliffhanger to Black Orchid, you see... Uh, I can't remember his name. The the elephant man in his clown costume. <laughs> he put... <laughs> I'm sorry, that's who he is. <laughs> You're welcome. Anyway, he like he like goes to strangle. Fuck! Why can't I remember her name either? Nissa. This is doppelganger. And then no, because isn't it Nissa who he goes to strangle in in the cliffhanger? No, no, no it's no, it's, it's Cranley. It's, it's Anne. Cran- it's Anne, Anne, Anne who? Yeah. No, Anne Talbot. Shut the fuck up, hard ass. I'm Aren't sorry. you writing the adaptation of 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 Sands of Time where, where she appears? She's called Anne Cranley in that. Yeah, because she's married. She's exactly. Married That's why I think she's Anne Cranley. <laughs> but she isn't. Not in black. Shut Orchid. up! Fuck. <laughs> anyway, he goes to strangle her in that cliffhanger, and then in the recap, the hands where he, you know, he's going to strangle are not there anymore. So, yeah. Fun. You know which soldier here, Jacob, is is the one from River Song Series Six? I can't remember. Yeah. Name. It's, uh, Captain Knight. That's it. The, the main soldier who isn't the That one right there, right? The one that's yeah, just yes. In? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> the, way, the, <laughs> the main that, one that was, who is That was a really brig. good story. That, that was actually a really good story. Actually, that whole series was really good. Yeah. I thought, it was, I, yeah, I, that, that was, I didn't think that series would have worked, but oddly enough, it did. It did, uh, yeah. It was a really good series. What series? Uh, River Song series. series. Yeah. What was in it? It was, um... Uh, it was, it was basically, like, it was like, 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 River going into... No, it wasn't sequels. It was her, like, going into the, like, an iconic classic Who story, so she went into... Or, an like, earthly just child. before it. Or just before it, like, cause... Yeah, so she went into an, an earthly child, Web of Fear, Carnival of Monsters, and Talons of Wing Chiang. There's only one of those that I would be interested in, and that's Talons. The Talons one was probably my favorite, because she teams up with Jago, of course. There is a musical number. Yes, it's cool. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> and, and and the recasting of um of uh, Magnus Greel and uh, uh, Lee Sen Chang, they're really good. That Big Finish didn't put Lisa and Chang on the cover, though, did they? Uh, no, it's Magnus Creel. 
Yeah. Actually, the Carnival of Monsters one was surprisingly good. Peep show. That was really good. Yeah. If you like car monsters, maybe. Well, um, it, it, it was really good. Like, you don't really need to love Carnival of Monsters to appreciate the story. I mean, I love Carnival of Monsters. Because the character in it isn't f- actually from Carnival of Monsters. It's it's, it's all from... side stuff, essentially. Yeah. Well, There's mostly. A... Mostly, yeah. I'm just... not going to spoil that, well, though. Because that's... Are those stupid gray aliens in it? Uh, no. No. Oh, okay. Does it are... just entirely are... inside the miniscope? There are Santarans, though. And Ogrons. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Just as long as those fucking aliens that don't Ooh, use the this, word but, but one of them, one of them, this, one of them this scene is so great, because you get to see Jack Butling acting with her do- with his daughter. Yeah, yeah. You also have Jamie trying to take charge. It's like, I don't understand what's going on. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Jacob, next time we have Jamie in an adaptation, I'm going to have you do the voice. (laughs) No, no, because I can't do it, Jamie. I can't can't do an impression. I was actually going to joke, what what if we casted um, Dylan as Sir Marmaduke? Harrington Smythe, make him be think- posh. I was, I was thinking of it. it was- I but I'm the one who gets to be Mr. Moffat in fucking human nature. <laughs> <laughs> who was the character that we're giving Mason in human nature that gets beaten? Oh, 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 the one that um that that the uh, John Smith has to, has to punish. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember the character. Which one is it? Fuck. I will make a note of it when we get there. It will be in the script. This role is already precasted as Mason Peters. <laughs> For an oddly specific it's... reason that you probably don't want to know. Mainly, he suggested it on Twitter as a joke. Also, the old age job on Jack Watling is pretty good. Oh, definitely. Like, I mean, it probably helps that it probably helps that this is black and white because, well, let's be honest, Doctor Who, lo- oh, classic Doctor Who, looks better in black and white. Mm-hmm. Actually, I've seen some really fucking cool fan colorizations that have made me want to watch the black and white stuff in color. I really want to well, see that. Uh, I really want to see that colorization of uh, Dallas Master Plan Part Two. Yeah, oh, yeah. I really it, looks, hope... it looks beautiful. It does. Yeah. Well, again, colorizing black and white is be- is great, but also you can take liberties with colorizing black and white and like still make it look good because you're from a black and white script. You don't have the problem of color giving it. Oh, the way mm-hmm. color film gives things away is different when you're colorizing film. If I'm making any sort of sense, probably not. I rarely make actual sense. Oh, look at this. A 1960s Doctor Who story that passes the Bechdel test. Oh, wait, no, they're talking about her dad. Shoot. I thought we had one. Um, guys? Yes. Can you, are you guys hearing me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, Brian? Did you say think... something to Jacob? What? I, I said I could hear Jacob, yeah. Can you hear us both? I can hear you. Can you not hear me? Jacobs. I I am speaking. Can Brian not hear me? Brian, can you hear him? No. <laughs> okay. Uh okay then. 
Jacob, uh, I don't know if you want to like quick drop and rejoin. I'm, I'm totally bullshitting, by the way. I can hear him. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fuck you, Brian. <laughs> you fucker. You, you absolute cunt. <laughs> Just the slime that Charlie gives off. The gutter press has a very large follow. What? Look at his little cute face. Brian, I thought you were already dating someone. His Robbie Rotten Chin. A man can't take, can't he? <laughs> This. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hold, Hold on a minute. Why are the <laughs> subtitles at the top of the screen now? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's because there's stuff going on at the bottom of the screen. Oh yeah, because because there because there are words at the bottom. They can't cover that up. Yeah, it's uh. Bruh, there's two of them. What? Oh, how great is that shot though? Oh, fucking, oh, I love it. Have my children once, Douglas Canfield again. Once again, amazing use use of shadows by Douglas Canfield. Music here is really good too. Yeah. It's it's a damn shame Camfield didn't come back to direct the five doctors. Was he originally slated to? Yeah, but then health problems got in the way. I yeah. think. Ah, sad. I'm glad I didn't. So they gave it to Peter. The, uh, so they gave it to Peter Mossett. I imagine it would have been Peter. Really, let's really just set forward. the camera down and sh point. Moffat. Jacob, sh Jacob, shut the fuck up. Peter Moffat's a fine director. Brian, what were you trying to say before Jacob just was continuously trying to rip, rip a new a uh, asshole into Peter Moffat for no reason? I, what was I trying to say? I don't know. I couldn't hear you, oh, I couldn't yeah, hear you glad, over Jacob's I, salt. I'm glad that I, uh, I didn't watch the reconstruction of this before watching it the first time. Because... Well, interestingly enough, there I don't think there was a loose cannon recon of this before it was found. Oh, really? Yeah, like the recons of this before it was found were were, were crap. Like I think it was it was found the year the loose cannon recon came out. Oh shit! Either Which... way, that recon must have been boring as fuck. Like I can't imagine <coughs> the story that just didn't need to tell us. Episode three, that's the one that's still missing, right? Yeah. Is the, yeah. Is the thing that, like, kills Well, I heard, that, I think the Loose Cannon Recon used, um, Recon used, um, some CGI for certain scenes. Gravity. Mm. <laughs> I don't mind Loose Cannon's CGI. It's fun. Yeah, I don't like, find it when they're doing Daleks. Though they're random, let's film actors for Evil of the Daleks for certain scenes is so no, weird. I, no, I like it. I like it. It just, it just, it just looks so weird because you can tell it's filmed on a modern camera. You know what's weird? Actually, the first time I watched the Evil of the Daleks recon, I could not tell. Really? Yeah. Probably because like, I just wasn't expecting it, so I was just like, "Oh yeah, this is just part of the story." Oh, cool that we have footage of that, and I just like was was none the wiser. But I mean, obviously, it became very apparent to me. But on first watch, I was just like, "Oh, cool, nice that we have that." And here comes the complete miscommunication of Victoria deciding to go and danger herself for pretty good reasons. What's also nice is that you don't necessarily need to see an abominable snowman to get this story. 
Like, yeah, you kind of do. Yeah. I think this story actually had better ratings than Abominable Snowmen. Hmm. So, so, I just missed that. Did you say that this story had better ratings than Abominable Snowmen? I think it might have. Like, at least... Kind of weird, of kind, you know, for like... <laughs> Like, like, just kind of looking at, like, season five, like, technically not a lot happens, because we only have, like, one companion exit and a companion entrance, and that's it. But, like, the only two properly, like, like non-essential stories in season five are Tomb of the Cybermen and the Ice Warriors. And even then, I'd say watch them both, because they're both great. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Tomb of the Cybermen is one of the, one of the best. Tomb of the Cybermen is essential, because it... Because... Victoria's first story, other than yeah, you know, no, people. no, you you really don't need that though, right? Yeah, but don't. it's the one that establish her establishes her as a long running companion. Well, yeah, you could you could pick that right up with any Victoria story post evil. Yeah. And then and Ice yes, only I just checked. This, story, this story did get better ratings than um, than a bomb of snowmen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Snowmen highest Is rating. Evans? Just... No, that's not Evans. Evans is the Welsh one, boyo. Okay, then yeah, he is special agent fuck up. Oh, yeah, because he did... I think this is, like, one of the few scenes he's in, and it's, like... This screws... This is establishing the screw-up of... Because they don't have that much location filming. I love the okay. I love this map. Why is that? Because it just it just asks so many questions of like, okay, how do they know? How are they getting real time data? <laughs> are people like calling back? Is there someone is is there someone back there turning on the little lights? Does anyone actually care about the logistics of this Doctor Who story from 1967? You don't need to everything, every little fucking detail explained to you. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's still, I just still find it funny, like that they have a map. Now, how many times have you watched this story, Jacob? That you, you've actually sat here and gone, they have a map, and I want to know the logistics of it. Um. Let's see, how many times have I... Uh, three times? Four that times, was a rhetorical know. question! <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Actually, I think I've only mentioned this three times. This will be the third. I've seen this story quite a few times. I'm not entirely sure yeah. how many actually. Well, it's one that that that, that still just is fun to rewatch. Mm. I've probably mentioned most is probably the invasion too much excitement. Also, it's just amazing that we have these episodes to begin with. Oh, and here comes Evans. The only times that I've legitimately seen my dad shit his pants over Dr. Henry when he died and the most of this was found. Brian, can you fucking speak up? Yeah, yeah you were very quiet there. A man singing in Welsh. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. 
So one of the only times I um I've seen my dad legitimately shit his pants over Doctor Who news was when Enemy of the World and most of this story was found. It must have been quite the sight to witness your father like actually shit his pants right in front of you. Dude, he did it so hard he like broke through the roof and rocketed out of the fucking house. Sounds like an expensive repair job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Special Agent, fuck up, I love you. (laughs) His name is Evans. Special Agent, fuck up. I love that he just spends the entire story trying to run away. It just makes it even better. He's also not the only coward in this story. You could call him Special Agent Fuck Up. You could call him Shaggy. Why Shaggy? Because that's the role he fulfills in this story. I'd argue okay. that Charlie also fulfills that role. <laughs> also, you know that um, Nick Courtney was originally cast as Captain Knight? Oh, really? Like, yeah. Huh. So what made them change the casting last minute? Um, the original guy playing him uh, was, was pulled out before rehearsals. Wait, what? Like, there was originally a different guy pl- cast to play Lethbridge. Uh, oh, okay, uh, yeah, to... okay. You, you hadn't specified that part. Gotcha. Yeah, so he he, he pulled out, and I think Nick, uh, it was like, uh, Canfield chose Courtney because he like they had already worked to, get to, to basically take over the role instead because they'd worked together with the Master Plan. Yeah. I can't be the only one who's who watches Master Plan and is, you know, mildly distracted from the actual story simply because of the fact that Nicholas Courtney's in it. Uh, uh very, very, very mildly for me. And I'm sure, Brian, you're not the only one. I don't know. For some reason, it just takes me out of it. I don't know. I, I think, especially given. The uh, the Sarah Kingdom trilogy from Big Finish, Brett Vaughn is a is a totally separate character for me. But like, it's only when when I can actually see him perform in episodes two and five that like that it does somewhat distract. Also, speaking of the Brigadier, uh, in two months we get more Brigadier on Big Finish. Yes, I'm making my way through First Doctor Adventures Volume Three right now. Oh, nice! I'm about. I mean, actually, it's probably the weakest volume of the three, but yeah. I'm excited for volume four of this, this go-round. So am I. Well, I think I think the Phoenicians might be my favorite of the historicals they've done so far for that eh, series. Still Great White Hurricane for me. Phoenicians was great, though. Actually, all the historicals were great. I wasn't yeah. so much a fan of the Barbarians and the Samurai. Or was That's... it the Samurai and the Barbarians? It's the Barbarians and the Samurai. Well, I think we're at the cliffhanger for part two, aren't we? Uh, yes, we yes, are. Yes, we actually. are. A real escape to danger. What if, what if Jamie and Evans just realized that they're not going to make it out? And so they lay down and just have hot sloppy sex right there and wait for the end. Jesus Christ, wait, that, wait, that, that, that's not what happens? Okay. I mean, it's really me. hard to this, tell. This annoys me. Because, <laughs> like, Jamie and Victoria don't get top billing. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just, it's weird. Like, you think they're the main cast members. They should probably be, like, billed. Right after the Doctor. I always, forget, I always forget that John Levine is one of the Yeti in this. 
Oh yeah, he is, isn't he? The Web of Fear Part 3 starting in 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, so the Web of Fear Part 3 is uh is, is the picture. This is the one we're gonna diverge the most because I hope you guys don't mind. I'm checking my phone. What? I'm checking my phone during this episode. Have fun. I mean... Have fun talking. Oh, 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 okay. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I don't mind the recon. I, I, I enjoy me a good recon because, you know, it's, it's, I, I love Lost episodes and it's always I mean, fascinating. Like, at least they put, me. at least, at least they put more effort into it. <laughs> than fucking the underwater, underwater menace. menace. Oh, fucking underwater menace. I hate that. So Actually, much. can we go? Let's 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 do some underwater menace conspiracy theories. Because according to the website for the Doctor Restoration team, they offered to do a, a recon like this for those episodes when they found out that they didn't want they weren't animating them. Mm-hmm. The BBC apparently said no, make it as crap as you can. Jesus. Like why? Like, oh, like yeah. Well, because they know. Cause, well, because they knew. Because they knew it wasn't gonna sell well. I guess. Because it's the fucking underwater menace. But here's the thing: they offered to do a recon like this for no extra charge. Like, then why not fucking let them? <laughs> like, let them, let them, let them integrate. The, and in, in an underwater menace, you have. I, 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 I guarantee. I guarantee. I guarantee the kind of people that animate and throw together reconstructions for Doctor Who DVDs aren't doing it for the fucking money. They're they're doing it because they want to see Doctor Who returned. And here he fucking is, Nick Courtney. Nick all Courtney. His wonderful mustache glory. And the Doctor's back. You know, honestly, I didn't even notice he was missing last episode. <laughs> he really did. He, he was missing because Pat Troughton was, was basically beat from working. Um, well, oh yeah, I get that, but like, just two I, didn't, roles. I, I didn't even notice it. It didn't even phase me. This is the first time it's ever been pointed out to me. It's the, it's the first time I've ever like, put any thought into the fact that he was missing from episode two. <laughs> I, see, like, even, like, this isn't the best recon, like, out there. Telesnap recon. It, it isn't. I mean, it's a good telesnap recon, but they put in, like, the effort. They do some, like, zooms. They... Yeah. It's not not They keep it moving. But it's decent. Whereas Underwater Menace doesn't even have, like, the title sequence. Oh, yeah, for Underwater Menace, don't they fucking do the title sequence as fucking telesnap? As as a telesnap. Oh, that's true. Oh, fuck, you're right. I forgot about that. <laughs> like, what the hell is that bullshit? Why would you do that? <sighs> and it's not the DVD restoration team's fault. It's the BBC's fault. Like, the BBC insisted that the episode begin with telesnaps of the actual title sequence. Well, really, just that it was a really low effort recon. Because they offered to do one like this, Brian. Where so like laying down now. I heard. Continue. Like you would have, like in the actual version, you would have the like bits like this, these zooms. Um, probably, if there were any surviving clips from part three, they would be implemented. Um, but like, no. The BBC was basically just like, no, just, 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 just do pictures. That's so lame. Do you think we'll get an animation for Underwater Menace now, though? Um, uh, I wouldn't doubt if they made one exclusively for the for the collection for season four, or if they just found parts one and four. I mean, because you have to think about it. It's like the same thing as the moon base. It wouldn't be that hard to do. And the moon base, they did. They did animate it. And the moon moon base base is is, is still the best animation. (laughs) Oh, hell yeah, dude. I love the moon base animation so much. You know what I can't wait for, though? Theory from the Deep. 
what? We're not doing... Com oh, wait, we will be doing a commentary of that because it's getting animated. Whoops. Whoops. So, so what can you wait for, bro? The next Cyberman commentary we do where we all think it's going to be fun and then all end up wanting to kill ourselves because it's really boring to watch Cybermen stories as a group for some reason. <laughs> That's true. We we've, we've always fucking found that. It, it's it's always just an awful experience. <laughs> we watched Silver Nemesis. There was another I I like I fucking watched the next Doctor while you guys bullshitted with me and I still hated it. I mean like even watching the moon base, an amazing story with Dylan and everyone, like it was still a really boring experience. <laughs> I remember by the end of it we were just like can we can we just skip the moon base? <laughs> yeah, it was weird. I don't know. Maybe we'll have fun with Tomb of the Cybermen when we get around to doing that one, though. I mean, I have a ton to offer on the discussion of Tomb of the Cybermen because I've seen it countless times. <laughs> I also just love to meme the fuck out of Eric Klieg. <laughs> Why? <laughs> now that I have released you... Ah! <laughs> Is that your fucking Eric Klieg impression? Eric Klieg. You know he was in, um, he was in a, uh, From Russia with Love? Was he really? Yeah. yeah he, he plays someone on the train, doesn't he? Yeah. And oh, it's the same cool. performance. <laughs> <laughs> and of course it's the third episode that's missing it, it could be such a good episode too like if, if we were able to see it oh no doubt it was because <laughs> well increase your Camfield <laughs> counter it was directed by Douglas Camfield and the rest of the episodes are amazing Oh my god, Jacob. Look, I love Douglas Canfield too, but calm the fuck down. I am calm. Fucking Jacob's just over here beating his dick to Douglas <laughs> He's He's just staring furiously at the reconstruction picture. <laughs> no, no, I have a picture of the Morbius, of the Douglas Canfield Morbius doctor pulled up. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Some of these freeze frames on the actor's faces really aren't aren't it, Chief. <laughs> really are. <laughs> I wonder if they redid this with like that room that that like that Romini program or whatever. Oh, it looked great. Well, maybe some of them would. Not all of them. Would. Well, some like some of the some of the grainier telesnaps because these these are um like clearly this this one right here that. He was just in the background of that last one, but his, his face would be all sorts of fucked up. Also, these telesnaps don't look half bad, considering. Like, usually, like, some, some stories just have really bad telesnaps. True. <clears throat> like Galaxy 4, which doesn't have any. Love Galaxy 4, though. It's okay. Shut up. Hopefully Dylan was here. That's, yeah. a nice, that's a nice photo of Trout. That is, actually. Or what What? What was just up. This isn't as good. No, I know which one you're talking about. She just rolled her R, like, really hard. <laughs> she also probably rolled her eyes. It's kind of a shame that they didn't bring back Travers or Anne for, for the invasion. I mean, they get a mention at the beginning. Yeah, well, because they were going to, but then it was, like, both Jack Watling and 
whoever plays Anne, who I don't remember the name of, were busy. Dude, imagine if they had showed up for the invasion, though. Like... It would have completed the trilogy. Well, A, and B... What if Travers and Anne just become part of the fucking unit family in the Pertwee era? I would love that. <clears throat> like, you'd lose Liz Shaw, but you'd have Anne. Yeah. I mean, Anne is very much a proto-Liz in this story. I mean, Liz is still a better character. Yeah. Oh yeah, Liz is a better character, but you can, you can, get, you well, can I... see where Derek... You can see where Derek Sherwin got the idea for Liz. Well, actually, if you just... Because I think just, he was script editor on the story, wasn't he? I believe so. Assuming, well, assuming that, um, you know, they would have returned for the invasion. You go into the Pertwee era, you just, you just have Anne basically regurgitate all the stuff Liz Shaw says, and therefore she's just as strong as a character as Liz Shaw would have been. Yeah. Makes sense to me. <clears throat> Hashtag Liz Shaw is a lesbian. Liz the Les. This is true. <laughs> I also always yeah, forget Mark that... Um, I would... Oh my god, that's so fucking awful. What? That photo. It's not How that awful. bad. Stop using it. <laughs> it's not that bad. See, that one's bad. That's fucking awful. I'm not talking about the quality, I'm just talking about the photo itself. This one's not bad, I like that. It's the one it's the where same like, photo. the photos are just hanging open in really <laughs> awkward positions that I'm not a fan of. Well, again, you have a guy taking pictures of a television screen. That's true. It, it also is such, it, it is such a shame that, like, everything... Like, when you have telesnaps stories that don't have telesnaps, like, almost all of season three. Corley's so cute, I would bend him over and deep throat him right now. Oh my god. No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> I love just saying shit like that for the shock factor. No. God. He just does the grapefruit method on me. Mm, no. Well, Brian, you, you missed your shot by uh, four years. Oh, yeah, he you're died? Dying. He died four years ago. Oh, shit. In Wales. <laughs> Why so specific? I don't know. That's Jamie, right? Yeah, that's Jamie. At least we can be confirmed that this story isn't going to drive Joey insane like Attack of the Cybermen. Hey, we still have three episodes after this. <laughs> there is, there is plenty of time yet. Yeah, but Why but, but here's think... the thing. This is a good story. A great attack of the Cybermen. Attack of the Cybermen's good, Jacob. Yeah, but this doesn't have like cryons that make you go crazy. Look, it was what not was the cryons that made me insane. What was it? It wasn't the story. It was you, cunts. <laughs> it was us. Yes. I mean, Fine, half. with you. What? I would. I would. Do? I would think it was you too, right? <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, I was on Attack of the Cybermen. The only commentary I haven't been on is Horns of Nymon. No, 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 I'm saying, like, it was you two that drove me insane in Attack of the Cybermen. Yeah, like, how yeah. did we do that? How, my question. But how did we do it, though? I can't remember. I forget, honestly. I just know I blame you two. <laughs> was it... I think we were sexually objectifying the fucking cry, cryons or something. And that was that? It. No, that, that was probably it. <laughs> Jeez. But yeah, the story is basically an allegory for the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> So you love watching telesnaps and doing commentaries of them, right, Joey? Sure. Underwater metas next time, guys. <laughs> actually, actually, I have the whole schedule of commentaries. I just forget what it is. So when are we doing Ambassador's Death, Joey? Yeah, that's a good uh, question. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Brian, we're going to record that Thursday, if that's okay with you. Thursday night. Do I look like I'm going anywhere or doing anything? Well, Brian, we can't see you. You're not showing your face. Don't get fucking smart with me, Jacob. <laughs> but, Brian, that's like half of my hey, personality. So fuck did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> the other half is incredible nerves. So I just keep looking at these new Eagle Moss figurines, and I'm really happy with the companion set and uh, and the Terry Malloy Davros we're getting. But wow, this Jadoon Cap Captain looks kind of shit. What? There's a new companion set? Uh, the, yeah, they're doing another big finish one. It's Dark Eyes 8 with Liv and a Dalek. I would have done Molly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <clears throat> Here, wait, like I will see a companion set from Dark Eyes. You miss out on an opportunity to do fucking Molly. Hang on. I'm, I'm, sending, I'm sending the boys to that one Twitter chat we have with Ark. The boys? The boys. Just check Twitter. Uh, oh, I see what you mean about the Jadoon the, the, the one. Yeah, generally. it was kind of shite. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really happy with it. The others look great. I mean, just fuck that shit. Why am I incognito? I don't know. I promise I wasn't doing anything gross. Except you were. Brian, Brian, this is you we're talking about. How do we know? <laughs> what the fuck are you trying to say? Brian, have you looked at them yet? I'm looking at them now. I had to pull up Twitter. Ah. Uh. Davros looks okay. I'm just I'm just not a huge fan of the Eagle Moss details, I guess. The Jadoon is fucking shit. Yeah. But that big finish set is quality. Actually, oh, yeah, oh, that's, that's okay. Not bad. See look, they put in a subtitle of what's going on. That's that's nice. There we go. Suppose I just hug the Yeti. What happens then? <laughs> what? Hang on, doesn't this kind of have the same plot as Web as Web Planet a little bit? What? Or at least this, the same what? subplot Jacob, of getting. Stop. Jacob, Jacob, what? Jacob, Jacob, stop talking. You're gonna, you're gonna, what? you're gonna kill, <laughs> you're gonna kill <laughs> Please, Jacob. 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 Forgive him. Jacob. God, the web please. Fear has him. the same fucking plot as the web land. <laughs> what have you <laughs> done, Jacob? <laughs> At least a little bit. A little... Now, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Try to explain this, Jacob. The subplot of <laughs> this whole subplot of taking control of a Yeti is essentially the same as being a Zarbi, as taking control of the Zarbi. But there's no fucking, like, other alien race on the planet that they're fucking fighting. Like, it's not like, they all, like all these people lived in fucking peace and harmony before the great, great intelligence took over the Yeti. Like, that makes no fucking sense, Jacob. I said subplots, I did not say plot. Well, I did say plot. It still makes no sense! That's the main plot of the web planet, Jacob. I think, 
I think we're breaking him, Brian. You're breaking him. I haven't done shit this time. It's okay. It's okay. Once we get to part four, everything will be okay. That doesn't reassure me at all. What was the cliffhanger of part three again? Isn't I it don't a, know, because it doesn't is... fucking exist. Oh, I know. Isn't this when Trevor's getting attacked? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, because they probably refilmed it so they didn't include the film at the end of this. Because they don't match up. I love up. Nicholas Courtney so much. Not as much as Chorley, though. <laughs> Chorley can have my kids anytime he wants. Oh, no. Hey, Jacob, what if we have Ark play one of the Silurians in Scales? I mean, yes. wasn't that part of the plan? Was it? Yeah. I thought that. I... Oh, or am I no, no, he, he, no, no, we wanted to be one of the Ice Warriors, but we never said anything about Silurians. Yeah. He could be Chuck. He could be Chuck. Yes. Chuck the Silurian. <laughs> There's a Silurian named Chuck? Yes. Chuck, yes. <laughs> he dies horribly, I think. Yeah, he gets killed by um, uh, by Janna. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, poor Chuck. Poor fucking Chuck. He's supposed to be pronounced Janna. Dude has a shit ton of ton of monologues though. Like, oh. we're giving arc monologues. Monologues. I was, I, I mean, really, just anything to hear more of Arc's voice, and we're gonna toss it through a voice modulator, and it'll be great. Is Chuck the lead Silurian? No, he he's the most sympathetic one though. He's like he's, he's the, the sane one. Oh, okay. So he's, basically, he's... basically there are three there are three kinds of earth reptiles that appear in scales. There's Silurians, sea devils, I and mean, really there's like only one sea devil. And then there are like a there's a hybrid between the two of sea devils and Silurians. So oh, are we just gonna have Brian do the sea devil then if it's just a single sea devil? Uh, yes. I mean I don't know. I wouldn't hate doing the sea devil. Okay, well, I was just going to say we do it in, do have someone in-house do that one. Cause... Yeah. Um, yeah, because he only has, like, three lines. I just scripted it that. But uh, so, what I was thinking for, what, I was what thinking about for the, the hybrid... Silurian Sea Devil hybrids, though? So what I, what I was thinking for that was, like, do the Sea Devil voice, and then, like, throw the Silurian modulator over it. Okay. Yeah. But I'd want to get some clips of how that sounds first. Just... Yeah, we'll play around with it. I mean, I mean, we're not going out of house for casting the Silurians, so yeah. because yeah, that's a a lot to cast. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a, yeah, it's a very complex sort of thing that just that I just don't want to deal with. Like, if you people, want, while you know I'm mean? doing my witch mark lines, which will be at some point soon, I can just experiment with that too. Well, I well first off, I mean, just make just make that tutorial that I asked you to make for the. For the ring module. Right, right. I was, just, I was planning second to do off, that all in one. Second year. off, it's been said once in this commentary, but if you haven't auditioned for Scales of Injustice yet, yeah, there are a lot of characters. Please do so. To, even though we're nixing all of the Silurian and Sea Devil characters from the open casting call, there are still a shit ton of characters to uh, to cast. So And there's part three. Been, oh my god, look at that face! <laughs> <laughs> that face that will haunt the my face nightmares. Of, holy fucking shit, I fucked up. Yeah. Look, it's Oh, you got all quiet again, Brian. It's because I blew my microphone by yelling about Travers's face. You dumbass. And with that, that's the end of part three. Fuck you! I get to call it the end of part three. It's the end of part three. The Web of Fear, part four, starting in three, two, one, go. So, Jacob! 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 Okay. Oh, look, it's Patrick Charlton's face. Oh, fuck. 
I miss when you used to do that. <laughs> I did that. He only does that for the Peter <laughs> Howell themes. He does it for the McCoy one too. Yeah. So the eighties themes. Yep. Pretty much, yeah. They're the only ones that are really screechy. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but the way that Yeti's, the Yeti's, like, the hair between the Yeti's eyes are for that specific Yeti is just funny to me. Mm, well, I still find it fairly intimidating. Dude, Yeti's got cake, though, am I right? Fuck you! <laughs> God damn. Here I am. Just sitting here, trying to turn the web of fear into a porno, but Joey won't let me. I mean, Nick Courtney's mustache is here, so it's already a porno. <laughs> That's the one thing that makes you come in your pants every time. <laughs> Jacob just left the car. <laughs> ASAP, he says. Okay, it's just <laughs> you and me, old buddy. Okay. Um. All right. So we got Nick Courtney here. He's looking fine as always. Looking little. Look at how young he is. Oh, what a guy. Face Courtney. You're getting quiet again. Did you blow out your mic again? I don't know. Did I? I don't know. hear me now you good it's all right jamie i'm not going to do anything silly only i'm going to do something fucking silly Which doctor impression do you think is your worst? Because I know you do, like, something for all of them. Um, well, that one I just did for Trump. Honestly. Probably my impression. Whoa, you, you're all muffled. You gotta, gotta speak up, my man. That's unfortunate. Ugh. All right. It's on the down anymore. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. So as far as like my worst doctor impression, um, I think it might be McCoy because I can't nail the accent. Fair enough. Fair enough. It was like it's weird. He's Scottish, but and it it is it's got definite definite hints of Scottish in it, but it also sounds English at the same time. So. Yeah. Basically, like, I have completely thrown the Scottish aspect out the window for <laughs> when, when doing my McCoy. Like, I don't even think about it actually being a Scottish accent. Like, I know it is, but I just hone it on, like, how Sylvester McCoy sounds, and I kind of throw the fact that he's Scottish out the window just when I'm thinking about how his voice sounds. Because I think that's something that, something that a lot of people get hung up on. They're like, oh yeah, he's Scottish, but he, he, he doesn't sound Scottish at all, so how do I deal with this? And Here, I think it's just really hard for me to do the R roll thing without automatically making it try to sound Scottish. Mm. So there's, there's like differences between the Scottish R roll and the English R roll because you can do an English R roll, but what McCoy does is definitely a Scottish one. Yeah, yeah. And as a result, I slip into the actual Scottish accent that I Maybe that's maybe that's just a general like advantage that I have because I can just R roll regularly without having to do an accent along with it. I wonder if I can R roll. Can I roll my R's? Apparently. 
Yeah, but no, it's just what I'm thinking of. Like I said, there are different R rolls for different accents. The way you roll the R is slightly different. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like, oh, yeah, so, but then, th then as far as your best doctor impression, I'd say your best is definitely Palm again, though. I actually don't get called up to do Paul McGann very often. That's so weird because, like, your Paul McGann Colin is, is, is spot way. on. I know you've done Colin way more because, like, that one got out there more. But I think, like, <clears throat> if you just did McGann more, people would notice it because your McGann is absolutely perfect. I haven't done it in a while. Here's the thing with the McGann, though. It's like it requires a bit of training when I do it. Mm. Like people just like my call in impression most of the time, regardless of how like I can just whip that one out. Yeah. Like the Paul McGann one, I have to focus on doing it for a bit before I like audition for anything or actually record a line that I've been given. Yeah. Otherwise it sounds more like Richard Armitage. Armitage, Armitage, I can't remember how his name is pronounced. Mm. And not like <clears throat> I think your your best doctor impression out of the two I've heard you do, which is Hurtley and McCoy, is definitely McCoy though. Duh. Thank you. <laughs> like, honestly, though, dude, every time a new novel adaptation gets out, the McCoy impression improves and sounds even more like him. Thanks, man. Like, t Time's Crucible was like, holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really happy with how that one came out. Mainly because it was definitely it was definitely the story I was able to like play around the most with with how far I can stretch like my McCoy isms. Because I I never really have gotten to go full silly with McCoy, but then getting to do the whole Doctor Wilby thing in part three w allowed me to stretch that out. Oh, well, you delivered it fantastically. It was I think it was one of your best performances as McCoy. Thanks. And then it was fun, like, going, like, straight back into very serious, like, season 26 S. McCoy. Um, after that, will be personality goes away. So, especially in that last confrontation with the process, I'm really happy with how my performance came out with that one. I'm just really happy with how Marcus's performance came out in that story. Oh, like, oh, oh yeah. He's, he's oh. amazing. Yeah, definitely. He's great. I had another thing I wanted to say to you. Oh yeah, but as far as like the performance I've done recently that I'm most proud of, it isn't out yet. But my one for Warhead as uh, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that one's amazing, dude. Like I gotta say, I'm I'm doing the Bobby scene for for the sneak peek. I know you haven't heard it yet. I'm I, I'm doing it because it's definitely my my favorite scene from part one because part one's done already, and. It came out so perfect, like, exactly how I would imagine it. Um, it's, all, it's a really good scene, right? And it doesn't have a lot to do with the rest of the story, so it makes for a good sneak peek. Definitely, definitely. And plus, I think you absolutely killed it as Bobby. Like, you, you were so great. Ah, uh, well, gracias, senor. I look forward to hearing it. I think, uh, also, I'm really happy with the music choice in it. Oh, <gasps> There's music?! Yeah, the whole thing's oh, underscored. Fuck yeah. Yeah, the entire scene is underscored. Oh my god, it's gonna sound so fucking good. <laughs> it's like, a lot of the time I, I do my performance and I'm kind of like, well, that's as good as it's gonna get. When I did Bobby, I went all out and I don't know, just because I felt like going all out by the time I was finished with it, I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, it's great. Seriously, like the way you do that whole monologue about like um about like um like 
how you how Bobby imagines like the children, um, and and it ends it with like it ends with the whole line of like uh, how's it go? Uh, it's, it's like they're animals, and it's my right to kill animals or whatever. It's it's such a great monologue. I'm about to use that for an audition monologue at some point. Dude, please, please do. Seriously, it's great. Oh, fuck. I'm not sure if this commentary will be out before or after the sneak peek comes out, because it comes out this Saturday. Oh, it does? Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. So, I'm not exactly sure. So, for those listening, either it's already out or it's coming out this Saturday. Uh, so, either look forward to it or go listen to it if you haven't already. Where is Derek Jacoby, though? What? <laughs> oh, that's how that's how I think of Jacob sometimes. Like, oh, uh, okay, gotcha. I was really Derek confused Jacoby. for a second. Gotcha. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Evans, oh shit, face. <laughs> so good. It just screams Ruro Raggy. <laughs> so this episode is happening in the background as we toot our own horns. Yeah. <laughs> We're just here, like, waking off ourselves. Just like, oh, yeah, it was so fucking good in that one performance you did. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are too! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> We're just listening to it like I thought we were watching Global Fear. This is what the happens. Global adaptations, you... the way Jacob writes them, it's all so clever. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um. We this is what happens with this is what it, you know, man, aren't we? We're we're fucking hypocrites. We're Jacob, just so hypocritical. <laughs> Jacob wasn't kidding right at the beginning that he was here to rope us in. Like like the moment he left, we were like, eh, so let's talk about something else. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's because he has things to actually offer on this story. As he like, does. <laughs> Weird and we, we and just take these commentaries the absolutely on the pissed story too. is. <laughs> I wish I wish we had another story like Remembrance of the Daleks where I got to be the one who like points out all the behind the scenes bullshit. I keep telling you, I want to do Doctor Who and the Silurians because Remembrance is your favorite TV story and Silurians is mine. So I don't see why we can't do Silurians eventually. I'm not opposed to doing Silurians. I just was waiting for you to bring it up. I I brought it up like the moment we finished the Remembrance one, and you're like, nah, I want to do a different story. I'm like, but you got your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think my logic behind it at the time, and you have to remember this was over a year ago too, was do we really want to waste both our favorite stories right away? Yeah, fair. We can do that one in the near future if you want to, though. Cool. Do you think it would have to be one we did with Dylan, though, or one with just you and me? Uh, mm, I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. Oh, yeah, but you never answered me. Did you see the the figurines I got today? The message I sent to the Amino chat? I did. I talked to you about them when I saw them. I said, Terry Malloy looks okay. For... No, 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 no. The ones I got today. Oh, no. The ones no. you got today? Yeah. Were they in the Twitter chat? Uh, no, they're in the Yank chat. On oh, okay. I'll, I'll look. Because... Amino! <laughs> I was on it for five seconds today. Did you see the rare occasion where I, I actually did. was on Amino? for more than five seconds. Yep. Ooh, blue coat sexy! <clears throat> <laughs> Actually, the Michael Wisher Davros looks fucking amazing. Yeah, it's really good. You know what it does look like, though? It looks like an upscaled version of the Corgi figure. Uh, I don't know I don't... if you've seen that. 
I have I'll, not. I'll send you a photo of it at some point. Cool. I mean, I think the Corgi figure is based on Terry Malloy, but it's so tiny that it's hard to tell. Mm. Is Jacob, is Jacob really going to miss this entire episode? <laughs> I, I really hope he is, just so we can give him shit for it when he comes back. <laughs> See, what else can we talk about while Jacob isn't here to wrangle us back in? <laughs> I'll just go, hey, Jacob, what are you been you when I busted? <laughs> it just, it, it, it dawns on me occasionally, like, how, 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 like how confused people must be when we refer, we continually refer to, to Jacob as one-eyed. <laughs> and people don't know that, like, he's actually, he actually only has one eye. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. We wouldn't, I, I wouldn't joke about it unless he found it. it. Like, if he, if he didn't find it funny when we made those jokes, I wouldn't joke about it. Oh yeah, but he, but he's okay joking about it. I mean, like, he calls himself the model. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <clears throat> oh, the location <gasps> here is really Oh, this nice. is the scene where space adventure is used. The music. Oh, yes. This scene always really weirds me out whenever I see it because I associate this bit of music with the Cybermen. Well, obviously, yeah. You know, I really feel like for scales, we should have pre-cast Liz and the Brig. And I had ideas for who I wanted to cast yeah. as them, but we just never got around. What's up? It's all good. Anyway, what I was saying was I feel like for scales, we should have pre-cast Liz and the Brig. And I had ideas for who I wanted to pre-cast as them, but I only got around to asking one of them, and they were like, eh, I don't know about it. And so... Here we are, just open casting the brig, Liz, Gates, Benton, all in one story. <laughs> it's it's going to be hell getting all of them to come back for more. Yeah. I mean, you know, as, oh. long, as, the re as, as long as the regulars come out to audition, you know, I'll, I'll make sure that they get cast as regulars that, we, that have been multiple stories that we've done. Um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I really want to watch Tomb of the Cybermen for some reason. That'll be the third Troughton story we do this year already. <laughs> I know, but I really want to watch it for some reason. I mean, we did three Davisons last year. Yeah, why not make Troughton our Davison this year? Well, because first off, all the commentaries are already decided for this year. Oh, shit. You ha have you sent me the schedule for that? Uh, I haven't, but I'll read them off quick. Uh, let me just pull up the list. When you realize Space Adventure is the closest equivalent to I Am the Doctor classic who has, though? Only in the 60s, though. It's not, like, constantly used. I mean, All right. <clears throat> this bit of music's been used since late Hartnell, though. So, so we've got Kiza Marinus next. That's with Connor. Uh, then we got Battlefield. That's with Jacob. Or wait, oh wait, Marinus is with Connor and Dylan. That's right. And then it's Battlefield with Jacob. And then it's. Uh, uh shit. Oh, okay. I see that was pushed back then. Okay. So then it's the invasion, then that's just with Dylan. Oh so, fuck. So we are doing three Troutons this year. Yeah. <laughs> Vengeance on Varos. I forget who that was with. Fuck. Well hell, what happened to the ones where it's just you and me, bro? That may be one of them, I forget. <clears throat> 
then it's Invasion of Time. Is that yeah. just you and me, or do we have someone no, else on for that? No, that, that one I know is with Connor. Okay, good. Because um, he despises that story. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's the one that we're doing alone, Warriors of the Deep. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be great. Uh, we should have had Dylan on just so he could have fucking roasted your ass. <laughs> so then we've got the Halloween commentary that we have not decided yet. And then the anniversary commentary, which is the three doctors. Oh, shit, we should have saved this one for Halloween. Yeah, it's all good. And then we've got Runaway Bride. You want to do Pyramids of Mars for Halloween? Mm, that could be fun. Or we could do Fear from the Deep then, because the animation will be out by then. Really? Yeah. It's coming out. I don't know if I'll have the animation in hand by that point, though. Oh, yeah. Because, like, you have to keep in mind shit. That bullshit. Yeah. I mean, we'll see where we're at. I mean, I know for a fact my copy of the Faceless Ones isn't going to get here when it's supposed to. Mm. Because of the travel ban and all that bullshit. I want to watch the faceless ones with my father, man. I want to. I want to give the faceless ones a new chance. You know, like now that it's animated, like it's maybe all, I'll yeah, like Brian, it. Brian, the faceless ones is already a great story. Right, but I don't like the faceless ones right now. I'm hoping that maybe the animation will save it for me. We'll mm -hmm. see. Jacob is really going to miss this entire episode. Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> I want to come back during the credits, though. <clears throat> That'd be great. And he'll come back, like, during part six. <laughs> <laughs> See, there we go. You were waiting for, this, for the commentary we do alone. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> we just do half of it by ourselves. Even though we just did one in January, the Mind Robber. It was just us. That is true. I I enjoyed the mind robber immensely. Oh, here it is! Damn it! I was hoping you. Sorry. Missed, I, was, I was hoping you would miss this whole episode, Jacob. Are we still on episode four? Uh, it's almost over. Okay, yeah. My internet decided to die, and I had to eat dinner. For what? Twenty fucking minutes? Yes. I mean, internet dead and dinner. That that easily equals twenty minutes, dude. I was initially saying that when he had just said internet, but whatever. It's all good. So how are we enjoying uh, part we have, four? We have barely been paying attention without you here, Jake. We, we did a little Stephen Moffat style self-wanking. It was cool. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, that sounds like you guys to a T. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Am I wrong? Oh, wait, here we go. This is the best cliffhanger. Hang on. I mean, I don't think... Oh, yeah, this cliffhanger. This is the best cliffhanger. Shh. It there is. Oh. So good. And, and they returns. lean. And yes, I did just call him Edmund. Because Ed Narnia? Is that what? supposed to be a Narnia joke? No, it's not, Jacob. I just felt like <laughs> mispronouncing the name. It's not a mispronunciation. You fucking changed it entirely. <laughs> Edmund, yeah. Edward, it's the same thing. It's not the same thing, Brian. It definitely is the same thing. No. Yes. Edmund and Edward are not the same name. It is. They're two different names. They come from the same root, but they're not the oh, same Oh, look, the name. episode's over. The Web of Fear, part five, starting in three, two, one, go. Did you guys know that the Web of Fear Part 4 was the most viewed episode of this story? Fuck you. Penis. <laughs> I hate you both.
I'm curious. Brian, have you seen the uh, Wheel in Space reconstruction on that's that's available on BritBox? Yes. I Is it any good? It. I watched it when I first got back. Um, I can't remember. It's been a while. <laughs> I mean, I've heard it's not as good as, as the Loose Cannon one. Because it, is, can- it isn't as, as good as, as the CG. Cannon. So. And I remember that for sure. It's. I guess it's fine though. Like uh, it. It was bearable. I thought this is not the underwater mass. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> that's that's the lowest bar possible. For it's it's hard to be to be lower than the underwater menace. Unless you just stuck a single still image in front of me and played the soundtrack. Oh, you can. See or the or maybe soundtrack. maybe those um those <clears throat> animations on YouTube. Oh God! <clears throat> you know the ones that were made in like Sims Four or something. <laughs> Sims Four. Isn't that how they were made? I don't know. No, they're like G mod or something. Either way, they're they're creepy. And did did Chorley die or something? Where did he go? No, he's not dead. Where is he? Not here. Also, the lighting is still really fucking amazing. Especially on Troughton. It's also just a bunch of dramatic close-up shots. All the dramatic close-up nothing, shots. Nothing is as dramatic close-up shoddy as fucking Dalek Invasion of Earth 2150 AD. <laughs> I still have not seen either of the Cushing films. I've seen the first one. <clears throat> Doctor Who and the Daleks is ass. Daleks and I actually, I think I saw Doctor Who and the Daleks before really I saw good. the original Dalek story. If you're gonna watch either of them, definitely watch Invasion Earth 2150. Yo, Jacob, when you get your degree as a fucking doctor, we should publish a Doctor Who review book together. What? When you become a doctor, because that's what you're doing. Yeah, when I become gonna, an actual doctor. Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna we're gonna make a Doctor Who review book together. And we're gonna be as pretentious as possible in it. A doctor's professional opinion on Doctor Who. See. Professional opinion. <laughs> professional. I'm not diagnosing the show. <laughs> <laughs> You diagnose it with the same genetic mutation that Ozzy Osbourne has that allows him to consume large amounts of things that fucking destroy his body, yet still live. (laughs) Wait, who? Wait, what? The comparison makes sense in my head. Are are you talking about Osgood, our friend Osgood? No, what? Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, Ozzy Osbourne. I heard Osgood. I'm awake. So Jack Watling is genuinely frightening here. Like yeah, he's great. Very, very ever so slight um pedophile types. We were all thinking it. Is that what shuts you guys off? Jack Watling just is you know, eyeing up his daughter, you feel? Roar. Okay. I'm surprised that's not a gif yet. <laughs> what if what if they open that door and instead of just a giant fucking roar, the Yeti goes, Rar, that means I love you in dinosaur. Fuck you. <laughs> fucking fucking oh Jamie God. just slammed <laughs> fucking Jamie just immediately <laughs> slammed the door <laughs> <into his face. laughs> This is uh, the proto midnight where they're like, let's just give up the doctor. Bro. Bro. The way he walks is so creepy. It's so stilted. Okay, so we're recording this on March 17th, and I'm looking up on this day in Doctor Who, and only one episode of Doctor Who has ever aired on March 17th. 
Which episode? Uh, Frontier in Space Part 4. So a good one. Yeah, it's just kind of weird that uh, only one in Doctor Who's entire history would air on, on this particular date. Huh. What well, kind of... Uh... Also, guys, I can't remember. What, what do you guys think my opinion is on Frontier in Space? You, you're, you're an edgelord, so you probably fucking hate it. Yeah, you probably hate it. It used that used to be my opinion on it. Oh, I, I know actually, what it is. I, I know what it is now. You appreciate it a bit more, but you still think that Planet of the Daleks is better for no reason. Actually, <laughs> the last time I watched both of them back to back, I paid more attention to Frontier than Planet, so that might be changing as well. Good for you. Frontier in Space was one of the first DVDs I owned. Cool. Now I no longer own it on DVD. Why is that? Because I own it on Blu-ray. So what'd you do with the old one? I sold it. Where'd you sell it on? At Facebook Marketplace. Who'd you sell it to? Uh, some guy in the area. Bruh. Seems slightly unlikely. <laughs> What? Do you think I'm lying? It just, just seems unlikely that like just someone in the area would also be like a, a, a classic Who enthusiast. It is just not often in America. You know, apparently he was an older guy. Huh. You know, I, I... The fact that Jacob was just talking about sending people things it reminded me of a Reminded me of the book he sent me and the really very nice note he sent me. Like for all for all the shit I give you when we do do these things, Jacob. And as much as I bullshit with you, you know I do love you deep down, right? Like that. No, no, it's clear that you hate me and want me dead. Oh yeah, no, I, fu- I fucking want to just throttle you till your <laughs> glass eye. You wish pops to stra- out. You wish to strangle me till dead. Yeah, definitely. If anyone but in no. the audience guess what I'm referencing with that. Wait, what is that? Wait, I fucking know that. Wait, I was, I wish to strangle you till dead. Yeah, what is that? I fucking know that. I'm not telling. No, you have to tell me. Wait, I fucking know that. Critical role. Fuck, I was wrong. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but yeah, no, this man, this man is so fucking nice. He just sent I'm me. I'm really not. I'm he, really not. You are. That fucking that fucking note you sent me along with the damn book was so you didn't need to do that and it just brightened my entire fucking week because it was... yeah but like for real though like jacob is the entire reason i read doctor who books like i like i can't like pinpoint any any other reason as to why i read doctor who books other than that time he sent me goth opera and um, oh right i did send you goth opera didn't i and uh and i loved it so much i kept fucking i just started this insane collection that I now nearly have a hundred Doctor Who books, and, and I think um, I think we're the only reason Mason now collects Doctor Who books. I mean, and, I uh, and and then the other reason being, of course, the novel adaptations, um, which which of course you know you're the whole reason behind Jacob. <laughs> Go the watch the timer retrospective. Because Doctor is... Adventures was because I wanted to know about a corner of the Doctor Who universe that Jacob hadn't touched. <laughs> Fuck me, I guess right. <laughs> Brian, you knew I was going to touch that corner eventually. I knew you were, but it was nice when I had touched it and you hadn't. You still could you still could outpace me if you learn how to read like at a decent pace. I, I I'm just about there with you, Jacob. Like at, at your reading pace. I just don't like buy as consistently as you. You also probably don't read as much as I do, because I am an obsessive reader. And not- yeah, but I think I think I read at the same pace, though. Was oh, very probably. Very like probably. Or some shit like that. What's up? Didn't you read it in, like, two to three days or something? It, it was like a week. It was like a week. I'm was not... Really? I am not that... I am not that good. I read Sky Pirates, which is one of the longest VNAs in two days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on Dreamstone Moon. Sky Pirates is the 40th VNA, and I've read them all in order. 
And I'm now up to... Well, I, uh, my next one is just War, which is 46. I'm hoping yeah. over the course Brian, of Brian, three... it took me a little over a week to do. I'm hoping over the course of these three-week break, I get to finish Dreamstone Moon. You should, because Seeing Eye is really good. It's it's an Ormond and Bloom. I know, I want to get to it really badly. Just power through it. Here. It's not even that I'm bored by Dreamstone Moon. I actually like it quite a bit. And film a review of it quickly, because the Bright Herder 2 YouTube channel needs content. <laughs> um, I think I'm also going to try and get my reviews of some Taran experiment and Genesis of the Daleks. I really need to sit, I, I've been telling myself for a week that I'm going to sit down and watch Terror of the Vervoids, but I just haven't. Ooh, I'm on part oh, four. Actually, I've been um, trying to watch it for like two weeks now. Actually, Jacob, I watched um the uh the special edition of, of Vervoids. It was actually really good. I know it's really good. It is. I think that's I'm, supposed to I'm take me a while to watch the, the, the standard edition. The standalone version makes it actually an okay story. <sighs> I liked the extended version of Mind Warp a lot, though. That's another thing my opinion's changed on. I like Mind Warp now. Yeah, another thing you were wrong about before. Mind Warp is, like, really fucking good. <laughs> It, it, fucking duh. <laughs> and Brian Blessed. I already just love Brian Blessed, but the fact that now I like Mind Warp and Brian Blessed is in that story. But fucking... why didn't you like Mind Warp to begin with? Uh, when I first watched it, I was really confused by it for some reason. I can't remember why, but I was. Also, season 26 is coming out in, like, a week from ah. the day we're recording this. Did you guys see that, um, <clears throat> that stream? I didn't watch the whole thing, obviously, but it was, like, a bunch of people after watching The Timeless Children, and this one dude actually started crying over how it supposedly ruined Doctor Who. Really? It's really? fucking, like... yeah, it's fucking hilarious. Like, the dude actually starts crying. Do it's you amazing. remember the one time I started crying over Bull's Trek? <laughs> no. Like a week ago? That actually <laughs> happened. Those were legitimate what, what, crying wait, what, noises. On, on the stream? Like, what, what video was that, during? Um, I think it was... Oh, was, think... well, was that towards the end of Fugitive? It was... I was like, thank God we're done with Fugitive, and then we moved on to Orphan 55, and Orphan 55 opened up with Rotten Tomatoes, and I just fucking lost it. Oh, yes, I do remember that. Yeah. Connor went to go get some water, and I, I just begged you for sweet death. Can we just talk about, though, like... God, uh, he will end my suffering. Can we just talk about Bolstrick's army of cunts coming after Connor, though? Dude, oh, yeah, what about that's... what about those the what one... about those two fucking cunts on my Twitter? <laughs> Wait, yeah. there were two people on your Twitter? Yeah, no, they took the like fucking the one... I call I called the first guy a chuckle fuck, and somebody <laughs> was like, "Oh, I bet I bet you get a lot of thunder cunts, don't you?" I was like, "I don't well, respect there the was, fact that you there are was one the of guy these who people, kept but I respect the fact that you used the word thunder cunt." Well, was the, the guy who's convinced you were gay? He was convinced we were all gay, and so, for some reason, legitimately thought that was like a really, really good insult. <laughs> You're just a bit well, gay, aren't you? Don't be gay, my friend. He's yeah. He said that one to Dylan. <laughs> he also said it to Brian. Yeah, he he implied that I was gay, and I uh, I, I swallow a lot. Gotta admit, though, like, I really wanted to get involved in all that shit, but that was happening at the exact same time that I had that one tweet that was blowing up immensely. <laughs> and so I was like, ah, fuck, this is, like, this is a really positive thread. I don't want to, like, get all get all up in, like, fucking bolstrick country. <laughs> <laughs> bolstrick country. I'm really upset that he had to delete the highlight reel, though. 
Yeah, yeah. I watched through it the night he put it up, and the same. It was amazing. I just love that. I I love the bit when I love the bit when Volstre, when Volstrek starts to starts to insinuate the only reason that Joe Martin's doctor exists, and then we all just start making uh, coming up with situations of like the doctor <laughs> regenerating and being black. <laughs> he just looks in the mirror. The regeneration's failing. <laughs> oh fuck! Well, Kiz of Andrazani feels black this time. <laughs> Oh fuck! If the say, any, to say, anyone listening, if you haven't watched Connor's um, burial of the dog fiddler stream. You just need to watch like all the bullstrick bits, which is like what the first three hours of it, Brian. Is that it's right? It's like the first hour and forty five minutes. No, it's way longer than that. Fucking power in power of the Daleks. The second Doctor is black. He looks in the mirror. He changes from Hartnell to him. He just goes, "Oh my word!" <laughs> Wait, no, what was the Capaldi one? It was like, I, I know why I was given this face, I know why I chose it! And then it flashes back to Toberman. <laughs> I still think it's amazing that we've ta- that you've ended up talking about mo- this story for like half of it. Before going completely off the rails. Oh, yeah. Because you left. Because I left. Once we get off track, it's really hard to get us back on track. True. See, now we're officially gone. Now we're just... Yeah, we, there, there's no coming back after this. <laughs> I mean, maybe in the last episode a bit. Eh, I doubt it. <laughs> I'm I'm a little upset because I've missed Special Agent Fuck Up fucking up so much, so... I think he's out of the story after this point. For some reason, I just I just see him picking up the ball and petting it like a damn cat. Speaking of damn cats, I got a kitten. She keeps banging at my door. She wants in. Turn turn your channel into just um, cute cat videos. Dude, do you know how fucked that would be? Do you know how pissed everyone subscribed to me would be? <laughs> <laughs> April Fool's joke. April Fool's joke this year. Just just cute cat. I'm curious what gonna do. <laughs> the next right. audio drama comes out. It's just a cute cat video. Invasion of the Cat People teaser. Oh, maybe you should do that, Joey. What's up? Put put out the teaser trailer for Invasion of the Cat People on April Fool's Day, and it just be a video of you playing with your cat. <laughs> By the way, Brian, I'm coming for you next. What? I'm coming for you next. In my what sub do you count. Mean by that? You're my you're my next sub count goal. Oh fuck! <laughs> you're, you're probably gonna beat me, man. Oh yeah, and once again, Joey, congratulations on over 200 subscribers. Much love. Oh yeah, th- shit! I should have been talking about this the whole time. This will be the the first like proper video that I've made like post uh, coming up on 200. So yeah, uh, or, or post actually hitting 200. So yeah, thank you to everyone. Who has subscribed and, and enjoys my fuckery? Um, it's it's been fun. It's been fun. Did you have? I'm like, actually getting close to. I'm getting kind of. I'm at like 188 now. Okay, wait. One person at a time. Brian, you first. Did you have like a little 200 subscriber thing in mind at some point? Uh, not really. It just kind of came up. Uh, I, I didn't really have time to think about it. Plus, That's I mean, how- it's a pretty. That's how pretty... 200 hit me, too. I remember I just half-assed an Alpha Centauri cover together through a little thank you at the beginning of it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I mean, basically, like, it, it's a pretty busy month as it is, um, and I'm, I'm sure I'll get some more ch- uh, some more traction through the scales casting calls, so that'll be cool. God damn it, Jacob, right. you're making me thirsty. 
the sipping Sorry. of your drink. I'll be back, guys. We've got four minutes. I'll be back in that time. No, I'm getting water. <laughs> Web of Fear episode five, the one where Brian fucks off. <laughs> um. No, so I love the makeup job on this guy. Like he yeah. looks so yeah. haggard. It's great. Also, this shot. This is just shooting through the web. Yeah. There's just, and it's clear that they're. It's like they're probably just in like a black background. It's just. <laughs> Why are we doing the? the, the... <laughs> Shit! Is that Castro Valva? Hello, everyone. Or is that... <laughs> Hello, Lord Sly. <laughs> Again, raise your hand if you want to see Dylan playing a posh bastard in in uh, Scales of Injustice. Me! I want to see him. He'll, he'll get the F-bomb of that story, then. <gasps> There's an F-bomb in that story? Yeah, one that, di- one, one that Dylan personally wrote in in, his, in one of his episodes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just decide like, to like, keep it in. I was scripting earlier today, and I came up on it, and uh, and I was like, "Wait a second, there's no way that's in the book." I would have remembered that, so I looked back in the book, and surely enough, it wasn't there. I was like, "Dylan, you ass, you <laughs> fucking, you threw in a fuck there." Um, you just figured it was okay. No, it totally works though. Like the scene still works. Um, I think it almost works better with the fuck. Yeah, it does. It does. I At least on remember. Audio. Did I say fucking Warhead at some point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bobby later on. Uh, when when there's the one flashback with uh, with Vincent. You talk to the one clerk lady and you're like, take a fucking break. But <laughs> he gets the first fuck of the novel adaptations, doesn't he? It, it is, it is. I, th- I think that was a purposeful choice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you auditioned for Bobby still. And I was like, oh, you'd, you'd be great for it. Um... Uh, well, I mean, get... I know, I know, I already had, I knew I already had a small character in the story, and it was Bobby. No, it was Guthrie. Could... Really? Yeah, you auditioned for Bobby. You already had Guthrie. Oh shit! Yeah, this cliffhanger where everything falls apart. It's probably the worst cliffhanger in the story. When what God say... just says, "Foam." Oh, I mean, the Troutonera does a good job making foam work as a villain. Indeed. Every other damn story, foam is a villain. <laughs> Jacob, shut up! Jacob, shut up! I just really want nothing in the world can stop me now. Oh yeah, script editor was Derek Sherwin. Took us like two episodes to finally settle that. <laughs> Dude. What? Nothing in the world can stop me now. The Web of Fear, part six, starting in three, two, one, go. Oh man, that is so small compared to what we were just using. <laughs> what if yeah. it's the CGI reconstruction? <laughs> Why would it be a reconstruction? <laughs> I don't know. Why would it be a reconstruction? <laughs> I was really unaware. Like... We've had to switch our viewing method for the last episode. <laughs> because Britbox went down. Oh god. Ooh. Is it a reconstruction? Is it it's a reconstruction? not going to be a reconstruction, you dumbass. It isn't a reconstruction. Too. Of course it's not a reconstruction! <laughs> Did he just call him dad? Oh, no. It's that sorry. Okay. What, dad? What are we going to do now, dad? Dad... Dad seemed to be a theme in this, as uh, mine has 
hit his head on a chandelier earlier tonight. That's why. That's why you called me a dick. I forgot. I never finished that explanation. I called your dad a fucking retard, and you like, you're a dick. If it was my mother, well. <laughs> oh no! Let's no, not. This is a public not, video. No, no. Dude, do you remember that one time we just sent angry messages about Jacob's mom <laughs> because he forgot <laughs> because to of his mic? Because <laughs> so cool. of Underworld? Yep, this is during Underworld, yep. Ah, oh, fuck. That was awful. Dylan popped on for a few seconds and he was just like, What are you guys doing? <laughs> Why would you put yourself through that? I didn't mean to. So were you able to hear us that entire time, Jacob? No. Oh. I wasn't. That's Sad. the saddest part. Right? That they weren't, <laughs> they weren't able to hear us because we were swearing up a storm about it. Like, here you are. You just want to watch some fucking Underworld with the, <laughs> your friend, you know? Which is already... You just want to sit back and watch Underworld then with in, the Then in the background... <laughs> You hear Jacob and Jacob's mom squawking at him about fucking bookshelves. I don't think it was about bookshelves. All these books actually came out, and then like all these all these cunts in your dorm like went to go talk to your mom and dad. It was fucking annoying. Yeah, yeah. James City looking a little chunky. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Here comes Nick Courtney, just uh, just about to cop a feel, you know. Yeah, just being Nick Courtney. Nick Courtney here to stop. Oh, the uh, you can you can uh, you can uh, cop a feel on me any day you want, Lethbridge Stewart. Nick Courtney here to stop the great Brian Corrigan caper on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> My account isn't open to the public, remember? Nobody's going to get that. <laughs> so someone's trying to impersonate Brian. <laughs> and I don't know why anyone would want to impersonate Brian. <laughs> well, there, there's a story that goes along with it. So there is this guy, right? His name's Corbin Long. My friend made this pride post because he's bisexual. Right? And Corbin Long commented... Fuck your feelings. Hashtag Trump 2020. Oh, dear. <laughs> so I may or may not have decided to lay into him. And the best part is I completely roasted this guy's ass. Like, he had such shitty comebacks, too. He was like, he was like, oh, well, look, here's Lord Voldemort coming down from Hogwarts to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Fuck what? <laughs> So basically, um, I used. I believe the the, the, the response to that is called, read another fucking Lord book. He called me Lord response, and I was like, "Bruh, I've thrown like countless creative insults at you, and you the best you can come up with is Lord fucking Voldemort." And so this cunt is the one that's trying to impersonate you. <clears throat> we, my my buddy and I, strongly suspect it is due to like just accounts that happen to be mutually following each other. Gotcha. You know, the... So, there's a couple people it could be. I'm not exactly sure. I have, like, two big suspects in my head. Fun. But, either way... <laughs> it's, Has the impersonator it's... posted anything? Um, hopefully he... Well, he didn't as of last night, and hopefully he can't because you know how I messaged you about it, Joey? Yeah. I sent that out in, like, a mass message thing to all my followers. Gotcha. So, like, close to 30 people reported him. I, I, I reported it, so. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully <clears throat> it's taken down. Because, like, I, I believe that you're... <clears throat> Count is taken down on Instagram. It doesn't actually. I mean, it still shows up, but you you don't have any posts, and it's just empty. So let's see if we can stop the great Brian Corgan caper. 
I think we may have already. Last account was hacked. Amateur writer, actor, and and director. 2021. I love sci-fi and fantasy. Well, the weird Two. thing... Here's the weird thing, right? Don't say the next bit out loud, but... It says, <laughs> it says class of 2021 in my profile, my actual profile, right? What it yeah. doesn't say in my actual profile is the high school I go to, which it says in that profile which high school I go to. So it's got to be someone from my high school. Oh, was the guy that you got that got like you got that insulted you as Voldemort go to your high school? Ah, uh, we don't know. I think he might. Like I said, it's it's just like a very strong feeling that he probably does. But yeah, like how would how would any of them know I go to that high school without them like following maybe my Twitter? Mm. So yeah, it's got to be someone I know, or someone who is aware of me and doesn't like me. It's fun. Fun. Mystery game. Some of the people on my profile were just total assholes about it, though. Like, when I did that mass message thing, one of my acting buddies messaged me and was like, he fucking said, he said, you know people are just doing this to bother you, right? Like, what? Really? No, I never would have guessed that based on the fact alone that I was bothered by it. Thank you for the insightful and helpful remark. Oh, look, it's a father with his daughter. Ha! So they are father and daughter in real life. It is funny. Ha ha. Also, you want to know what else? What's also funny? What? Jack Watling is dead. Ha! Did, did we snap you again? <laughs> we might have. Joey, how do you feel about the meaning of life right now? I mean, really, there is no meaning to life. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna die. It means nothing. And really, COVID 19 is just here to push us along. You know, you, know, you, you have to respect the virus. Yeah. <laughs> like, like those fucking Capri Sun commercials? Respect the pouch. <laughs> Someone just coughs on you, they turn into a hot air balloon or some shit. You get... <laughs> it goes, respect Corona! Respect it! <laughs> he goes, I forgot about you, Chorley. <laughs> I forget about Charlie. And now they kiss, right? Yeah. The Look, he's Fury leaning in for it, bro. He's <laughs> leaning in the for Web it. The Web of has been a big gay allegory. I mean, Ooh, their guns. He's taking the glasses off. <gasps> Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Here he comes. I mean, you have these big furry brown things. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. no, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that shootout webbing. Oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> 
Come on, you you left the door wide right away to wide open for that. Also, not having the subtitles is just hilarious because you can just you can just toss in whatever the hell you want. <laughs> I love you, Doctor Johnson, and I want to have your babies. He's pushing back Charlie's advances, though. He put his glasses back on. Yeah, he's he's like, look, I know how you feel about me, but the feeling is it would never work. It would never, it would never work. work. Between us. You're a news reporter. I'm a soldier. Damn it. And I'm currently in the in, 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 uh, my mind is currently in the control of a uh... and see it's even more sexual here. And Travers just wants to fuck the doctor. Oh my I god! Just... <laughs> I think that's just a Diamanda Hoggins point of every female guest star and several male guest stars wanting to fuck Patrick Troughton. <laughs> Nicholas Courtney comes in and says, "Yes, well, I have quite the idea." Let's do a threesome, shall we? Wait, seriously? Did were, were there male guest stars that wanted to fuck Patrick Trout? I don't know. I mean, Us. Fraser Hines wanted to fuck him enough that he stayed on for the rest of his tenure. He was meant to be a side character, remember? Yeah. Evans just got his anus split in half. <laughs> the way the Yeti was carrying him looked like it. Yeah, this is what happens when Jacob. I promise you guys, you don't, you apart. don't want to, you don't want to go back there. They do horrible things. <laughs> there is a bearded man and a <laughs> and a young blonde man in cricket wear. They're doing some BDSM bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, River Song watches. Oh, oh no! Oh, shit. Oh, no. And giggles to herself. I hate this. I hate this so much. They call Anthony Ainley anally for a reason. <laughs> no! Blockbusters. We bust Wait a minute. that block between your legs. Is one of the actors credited Sydney po- uh, Poitier? Does that Yeti have the recorder? I can't tell. No. no. Oh yeah, there's a in it. Jack Watling trying very hard not to eye up his daughter. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you mean his actual daughter or the actress playing his daughter? I'll leave it up to you. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. You have to give us an answer, right? <laughs> it's up to you. What do you think I meant? I'd like to think you mean the actress playing his daughter. But knowing <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, God. Please, you're right on. Spe- Speaking of Blu-rays, in a very, very diverting topic, who here watches the Doctor's Cookbook? Who be texting? Ah, uh, no one. The mall. <laughs> Fucking god! And this is where it turns into a stage play. 
because it kind of does. Cheating out and bullshit like that? Yeah. Or just, like, making the set feel like a stage. Did you guys hear about Jared Leto and the the coronavirus? What the fuck is happening to my phone right now? So... My man Jared Leto posted this, said, <clears throat> Wow, 12 days ago, I began a silent meditation in the desert. We were totally isolated. No phone, no communication, etc. We had no idea what was happening outside the facility. Walked out yesterday into a very different world, one that's been changed forever. Mind-blowing, to say the least. I'm getting messages from friends and family all around the globe and catching up on what's going on. Hope you and yours are okay. Sending positive energy to all. Stay inside, stay safe. <laughs> and honestly, like... <laughs> Jared Leto not knowing about coronavirus because he was just away for that long is, like, the most Jared Leto thing I've ever seen. <laughs> this see what's happening with the season 12 Blu-ray? Movies nearby. In the UK? Yeah, I saw that. That they're, like, apparently they've got the season 10 disc arch? Yeah, Movies but nearby. But they're still the season 12 discs, yeah. I hate my phone. What? My phone's having a seizure right now, and I'm just trying to get back to my girlfriend, is all. That's all. We should drag Brian's girlfriend into one of these. Maybe. Oh, I don't oh know. no, actually, actually, Brian, did I tell you, we might have uh, Lily on the next one, on, on Ambassadors. Oh. Fuck, now I have to oh. dra- drag my girlfriend into it, don't I? <laughs> I mean, if you really want to. I really don't. <laughs> Not with ambassadors. <laughs> like she, she hasn't seen Doctor Who. You have to understand. Like, <laughs> then just introduce her with ambassadors, as we're all just like being cunts over the entire thing. <laughs> no, you should make a series of introducing her to Doctor Who. That'd be fun. I might. I thought about it. Like, start with, like, do, like, one story from each doctor. Yeah. It's still doing that thing. What thing? God fucking damn it. Swipe to see my updates. What are your updates? Maybe it's my Bluetooth headphones being all weird and funky. Just turn my Bluetooth off. Thank yes. you for that, Brian. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't understand. Brian! <laughs> Brian! <laughs> the Love of Fear in Parts, <laughs> Episode 6, with guest star Siri. <laughs> there, I fixed it. I love how they, this episode ends with like a clear setup for like a sequel that never happens on television. Oh yeah, that's unless you're like Lewis Kent and you think, oh, he's gonna do his thing on the Laird of McCrimmon. Guys? Yes. Lewis Kent hasn't commented on my recent video yet. Oh, oh, sad. He did did on Moonflash ask me when I was doing the Lost Stories. Oh my god. You've been doing the Lost Stories. But I haven't done any Peter Davison ones. Because you're not fucking at them yet. I know, I'm like... I'm like five stories away from them. 
A big comedian. Ah, oh, special <laughs> agent, fuck up! Woo! <laughs> Yeah, I want to see. I want to see what Brian and his girlfriend commenting on Doctor Who. That'll be hilarious. Okay, only mildly creeped out by that statement, Jacob. But okay. Well, because Brian, I imagine you won't contain your crazy. So, did you ever like check out Lewis Kent's channel, Jacob? I don't think he has anything on his channel. Oh, boy. Well, he doesn't have anything on his channel, but he has these playlists that are full of your videos. That's not creepy at all. One of them is called Doctor Who, What Needs to be Animated Before 2030. And it's your ultimate Doctor Who marathon. It's just certain stories that, uh, that he wants animated. And then Doctor Who Big Finish Lost Stories that might be animated, once again, full of your videos on the Lost Story. Why? <laughs> what a fucking guy. <laughs> He's just a fan, you know? There's no shame. Who's demanded I have two stories that don't even exist? Do I need to start reading the list, Brian? No, we're at the end of this commentary. We need to start fucking wrapping up. We do. So this was fun. So was it Jordy though? And I'm Travers glad. I'm... And Travers and Nick Courtney. I almost said Briggs. And Special Agent Fuckup, who only knows to stare into space very awkwardly. I'll have an orgy while the Doctor and friends slip out quietly. Indeed. Also... Chorley totally has a thing for Ann Travers. Oh, definitely. Oh yeah, this is the most awkward ending to an episode. <clears throat> kind of is, yeah. It's just weird. They, run, mean, off creates, it, they, they, they cre- run off screen and then the credits start rolling. It's just really weird. It creates a nice story gap. I guess. Ah, shit. Well, that was it. Uh, Brian, did you have a good time? Probably not. Jacob, did you have a good time? Probably not. Did I have a good time? No. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were legitimately asking for a second. (laughs) I mean, you could could talk about it if you you had a good time or not, but you only Um, have 30 seconds. (laughs) I had a time. Whoa. Brian, off your phone. (laughs) I'm gonna ask what he wants. With special guest, Brian's phone. Brian, fuck off. Brian, get your phone to fuck off. <laughs> fuck you. I'll call him back in a few. <laughs> Who <laughs> was it? Who was it? Brian, school tell the buddy. world. It was a school buddy. His name's Bryce. Bryce. Tell Bryce to fuck off and show him this video. <laughs> I have no idea what he wanted. <laughs> Dougie Campfield is a doctor now. No, he's not a doctor.